Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. What's happening? I am JP, your host. Joining me, as always, is co-host Nick Martin, wearing a hat that I highly disapprove of. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good. That's why I wore the hat. You know, I should go I get you would highly disapprove. Of I it. should go get mine. Actually, I, I want to wear my Raider hat because yesterday, last night was just dude, unbelievable. We may get into that today. Post. I, don't, I don't watch football, so I'm watching your post. And I'm like, damn it. They lost. He's going to be all grumpy today. Well, they, 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 they should have lost. They, they did their they, best well, to try and lose out. it, but <laughs> they, they actually won the game two times. I don't know. But before we get into that, let me introduce <laughs> you today's amazing, awesome guest. He is a musician. He's a dad. At least we think he's a dad. I'm assuming he's a dad because he's on DadCast. Welcome to DadCast, Mr. Tyler Boone. Hello, sir. How are you, man? Great, great. I am a, I am not a dad. No. No? <laughs> you're, you're not a dad? No, but I mean... <laughs> I, uh, I own a bourbon company. That's my baby. Wow. Oh, so you, you now have the distinction of being the very first guest on this episode who is 100% legitimately not a father. Not a dad. I'm texting hey. our PR rep right now because she guaranteed me that you were a dad. <laughs> this so, uh, this is really, <laughs> really awkward. So so this is what we typically do on this uh, show. It's dad <laughs> cast, and we typically awesome. discuss all things fatherhood and, and, you know, the path and the journey that is fatherhood. But thankfully, uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've kind of veered out of our lane a little bit, and we've discussed uh, COVID issues with doctors and local council people. Why the hell not open it up to Tyler Boone, musician, who, could very well be a dad in the future, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, it it was M Marissa, right? Yeah. That's we got connected. Yeah, we. I, I, maybe she just thought I'm a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I don't know. A dad vibe or something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Marissa, if you do come back and, just, and, and ever watch this like, episode, um. Anywho. Hey, man, bye, we got we could have some different perspective on stuff that could still be cool. Well, absolutely. We typically do that on every pad podcast, but so that answers the question. And now that we get that awkwardness out of the way, Tyler, let's, tell let's us about, about bourbon. Okay. You know what? But I want to know, first of all, about your music. You, what, yes. what, what did it, you know, genre where you got your star? I mean, everything, what, what, who, and what is Tyler Boone and what is his music all about? Yeah, man. So, um, uh, I started playing music when I, I'm from the East Coast, Charleston, South Carolina. I uh, played in like metal bands, which is cool because then we'll, like, I'm sure we'll bounce around. Uh, now I own a bourbon label and we're sponsoring. I just, what I'm getting at is when I start, first started playing music, I was a huge metalhead. Still, still am, but that's what got me into it. And uh, like next week, we're sponsoring a, a Louder Than Life in Louisville. It's like Metallica, like oh, Slipknot. Yeah. And it'd be cool. It's going to be super cool. But, um, but that, you know, whatever, just playing in garage bands. And then the one thing that I, on a, at an early age, I was like, dude, like, you know, we, cause it, it was a lot back then. Like you would get with your buddies, maybe you, you, you could write good music, maybe the drum, whatever it was, eventually you maybe worked your butt off to write a song. And then you bust your butt to go to the studio. And the next, you know, the band breaks up and you're back at square one. Right. <laughs> and so at an early age, my, the, the bass player and drummer from my, jazz band because i was always like a guitar player in high school like hey dude like let's start a band but like let's just call it let's just call it tyler but it wasn't even my idea and i was like well i guess you know like hey everyone knows it's your band so i started doing the songwriter thing and it's worked out because um i have like musicians all across the country now where i hire them fly them all around play shows but it's like i own the music 100 percent, right so uh either i might lose on a gig like we just did Sarah fest milwaukee definitely lost on that one you know, still got paid, but you know, fly people in is expensive. Um, oh, Nick, like, Nick I, knows all about that. Yeah. Oh, it's so, dude. I, you know, I'm like, yeah, I've been a concert shit. promoter for over 20 years. So yeah, it's like, sometimes it's great. And sometimes it's like, man, what was I thinking? But sometimes you the, lose your butt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And on, on the weirdest ones too, like I brought Joe Nichols into Grants Pass three summers ago, mm -hmm. thought it would be a home run. And dude, it was a sixty thousand dollar show. We ended up losing about forty grand. Hmm. Uh, I was, yeah, I was like, oh man! And like history shows, like every show he played up to that point, he was selling twenty five hundred tickets. We sold four hundred. It dude, it, it's it, so it, weird. Was it a weekend too? Was it a Saturday? It was a Thursday night. So he we we caught him in route. Um, 
Yeah. It, on the we're on the West Coast, so we caught him in or out between. I think it was like Sacramento and Portland or something. I'm telling you, and, and this is no no hit on Grants Pass because I love you, Grants Pass, but it was the geography. It is bottom line. If, you if know. I had put it in Medford, thirty five miles south, we probably would have had twenty five hundred tickets sold. Oh yeah, easy, it, it's, easy. It, isn't that interesting? Yeah, uh, it's, like, I used to put out, I mean, I was never like, I mean, I would put on tons of events of my own money, but when it was like uh, bigger events and I was just kind of partnering up with bigger talent buyers to kind of do other stuff with them, obviously to play it. But uh, we did one with uh, Dr. John right before he died. And oh, wow. dude, I'm not kidding you. There was a hundred people there and he was oh. 80 grand. <laughs> and the, and the, at the end of the night, I ran to, I ran to go get the check, right? Cause I was still playing and I, I paid my guys out of my own shit. And I was mm-hmm. like, I got to get the money. And because there was a contract. And uh, I went up to the lady and do I me. Mean, she, she wanted to ball her eyes out, man. She was a talent buyer. And I went to all the bands. Everyone's getting drunk. Everyone's partying because it's a weird, it's like a camp thing. But it was like, no one showed up. <laughs> People are still having a good time. And I told all the bands, I'm like, dude, you better cash a check on your phone now. It's going to bounce. And then all, none of the bands cast their check. But I'm the one that booked all of them. I cashed my oh. check as soon as I got back to my car on my phone, right? And the next week, all the guys are like, dude, my check bounced. I'm like, yeah, because there was no money left. You know what I mean? So oh, I, I mean, I've been there too, man. I've yeah. been there too. I'm oh, my like, biggest flop, I, I brought Presidents of the United States of America into Medford oh, wow. right when Peaches came out. So they were hot. And uh, yeah. we'd set it up at a, at, a, at a skating rink, all like total, like <laughs> the, the vibe of like a 90s vibe. So such a cool concert. 300 tickets. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was like, yeah. And like the, the night before they sold 7,000 tickets up in Portland. I'm like, what well, the know, hell? The one thing I'm sure that both of you guys agree on is like, stop asking for free tickets, people. You know what I mean? People don't yeah. really understand how much goes into that. Yeah. It's, yeah it's crazy. Production. So and Nick, hey, go get a free ticket. Uh, Nick, uh, anyway. This is the first opportunity at a real, well, not a real, but an actual podcast. It is kind of what we do. Um, and he challenged me on the last podcast to uh, <laughs> wear this the entire episode. Yes. So I'm accepting his challenge. And uh, all Put right, here we go, big boy. So there we go. There go. Okay. So there, there, and there. Got, yeah, just, just leave it just like that. Okay. Oh my god, that thing spins, dude. Oh yeah, it's badass. <laughs> <laughs> I took my boy, my 11 year old son, to SummerSlam in Vegas last month, and um, I did all right on the slots. So I went and. Picked up this four hundred dollar beautiful heavy all metal gold spinny championship belt, and I showed it off on podcast we did a couple weeks ago, and that's when he's like, "You got to wear that on the next one, the entire episode." So I was a little disappointed he didn't use our celebrity that our little little, little tiny bit of celebrity that we have to go uh, lay the gauntlet down with John Cena for. Hey me. man, I I couldn't get close enough. <laughs> I, I, I tried. I yelled at Booker T. I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but I would totally kick his ass. I mean, <laughs> let him kick my ass. <laughs> That's so, cool, man. That's uh, awesome. I think it won't stop spinning too. That's pretty dope. It, it, it <laughs> make, makes for good video. A little distracting, I suppose. Cool. Dude, so I saw you got Ryan Adams on uh, on your social media checking out your bourbon. Yeah, I, that, I love Ryan Adams. One of my hands down, one of my favorite singer songwriters of all time. That's, he's, that's he's, so cool. He's a, uh, you know, I, that guy's been going, I mean, it's just Hollywood. A lot of people go through a lot of crazy stuff and he got, I think he pretty much got canceled a couple years ago. And so yeah. he's kind of like coming back trying to, I think he just got a new agent um, with ICM, whatever, like whatever. He just wants to get back to work. And mm-hmm. uh, he, he's been doing, if you watch his Instagram, he's doing a, uh, every day he does a concert. Okay. Uh, he, go, he goes live in his, in his house in Hollywood. He just goes live every night and does like an hour. Then he posts it. And mm-hmm. uh, he's just like, a, he just kind of reached out and was like, what's up, dude? You got a bourbon? I was like, holy shit. So it's cool, man. Uh, Frankie cool. from uh, Survivor bought a bottle recently. Uh-huh. I had the tiger. Um, Shine Down. I'm really close with those guys. You know, oh, they, nice. don't, they don't usually drink. Uh, Bass, the bass player, does. that's who I'm super close with. Um, I used to run their studio for a long time. Yeah, I was going to say, I know like the that. singer doesn't, I, th- I thought he was not drinking. <laughs> they they <laughs> so, are. Seriously. Yeah. If you if you smoke weed around them, you're kicked out of the band. Yeah. Because it's a, it, it's a gateway to, to math. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. He's, yeah, he's super like straight edge now. And like, yeah. But some of the nicest guys in the world, man, that new yeah. record, they just finished it. Uh, they did it all back in Charleston too. Um, nice. If you didn't know that, Bass is kind of like the, uh, the secret ingredient to that band now like when they when he came in the stuff kind of got a little bit more anthony more poppy uh-huh. in a sense 
like rock and roll stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, man, yeah, but yeah, Ryan Adams, it was, it was cool. It was cool. He's like, yeah, send me a bottle. We used to sp- sponsor a thing out here called a Jam in the Van. Really cool music platform, and uh, now it's a comedy thing too. So like, you know, we have yeah, I got them over there. We got little cigars that we make too that we dip them in the bourbon. Um, and like Jeremy, mm. P- Jeremy Piven's a huge fan of him because he's a big cigar guy. So uh, just I guess just living in L.A., man, people just they uh, they, they caught wind of it. So it's cool, you know. So that's cool. You saw that. That was last night, like two a.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I'm a big Ryan Adams fan. Also a Jeremy Piven fan, and Jeremy Piven, I'm pretty sure is a dad. So we we should totally have him on the podcast. There goes yeah. Nick dropping those names again. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, dude, I'm not afraid to name drop. I John know. Zeno. Well, that's what that's what they've all said to do. I mean, we got some connections that's and right. friends that are up Wayne there as well, Johnson. and they all. <laughs> Tyler Boone. Yeah, it's, how, it's how we got Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> Someone name dropped him at some point, and here we are. Exactly. Who, who is not a dad? Yeah, that's what, right. that is still just so baffling to me. I mean, that is literally the premise of our podcast. I, I'm, you know what? I, I'm curious as to how this worked out, how it got to you and, 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 you know, and it's fine. Don't get me wrong. We're totally stoked to chat with you, man, but it's just, it's, it's funny. It's funny more than anything else. It's all good. It's going to be a great episode. Who cares? Hey, something, <laughs> something, something to remember. Hey, remember that one time we brought that guy who's not a father. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be a dad ever? Is that something he, that's crossed your mind? He, he or? reminded us of our freedom. <laughs> we had and, before. And I, <laughs> I, I would totally be a dad. Like, I, I don't know if like, um, I'm like, I don't think actually, you know, you know, maybe as answer for me, man, uh, I don't think you're ever ready for it. Right. But it just, when oh. it happens, it happens. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Kind of. so, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I think I definitely would want, like, I always like, you know, if I'm just like chilling out or just kind of just doing whatever, not working, I'm always just like, man, it would be cool if there was like a little dude running around that I was like, like my best little friend, you know? So yeah, for sure. It is really cool, but you aren't kidding. No one's ever ready. Um, If, if there ever was a time in my life where, Oh, there's that metal again. It's so nice. Um, Where I would be ready. I, it it would look like this. I I was in my mid thirties when I found out the lady was pregnant and we had the kid. So I got past all the, the partying and everything. Well, actually I was still partying, but I had no problem quitting it uh, in all forms and fashions when I found out because of the age and the experience of partying. So it worked out well for me. And at a a time of life where there was, there was not even a hint of apprehension or anything, any fear. It was just bring it. All right. I'm excited. And now my son, 11 years later, is my best friend. You ain't kidding, but he's not so little running around anymore. Now he's 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 getting up 11. there. He's as big as you. He's in six. Uh, come on now. He's, he's about as tall as you, Nick, not me. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is short for the record. Uh, but he's in sixth grade and, and it's doing awesome. He's 10 years away from tasting his first full-fledged bourbon legally. Nice. There you go, dude. Which we will get That's into. But it's a great thing, man. So, you know, if and when that ever goes down the path, I'm already I'm, I'm booking you for another episode if and when that time comes, uh, just because <laughs> that'll be, you know, five years later, Tyler Boone's back on DadCast when he's actually a dad. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell What's you, man, I'm, I'm in my 40s, dude, and I just had a baby. It's you're still never, ever ready. There's shit that comes up all the time, literally shit that comes up all the time. That you're like, what the hell? I, w- I wasn't prepared for this. So yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You know what, Nick, I, but, you guys talk for a sec. I can't continue watching you. I'll be right back. Just trust me. <laughs> what, what do you, you better not like, don't, don't come back naked, dude. I just, I didn't tell you just to wear the belt by itself, man. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Like my little guy's like my best friend. dude. like, we, we watch Coco melon. He, he loves freaking he actually he loves shine down and Papa Roach. So it's, oh, that's, that's like, cool. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the cool part is he'll come in the office here and we'll throw on some Papa Roach videos and he'll just go crazy. That's cool, man. Oh, you wearing an LA hat. Ah, uh, see, there you go. Yeah. I grew well, up in the cool, Bay area. Man. So I got to wrap my, rep my home. I'm not letting my co-host rock a giants without me repping, <laughs> repping my boys in blue, even though this isn't even a blue hat, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, my, my whole family is from San Diego. Okay. So they're, they're all, they're all, you know, Padres and all that stuff. Well, and then, 
know, the Chargers left and then everyone hated it. But, um, you know, but yeah, we're all from we're all from San Diego. Are they back to being Charger fans now and get, they got over that or is that just that's uh, that? Uh, not not really, dude. Like they lived. There were so many family. They were like, I mean, you saw online too. people were like burning their jerseys and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> people, people were like, but I mean, dude, that old stadium was old. Oh, you know, the, now it's the like, Murph, Jack Murphy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't even call it oh, that yeah. anymore. It was, that's the old school. So, who are you? Are you are you a sports fan at all, Tyler? A little bit. I mean, I'm not like uh, I'm not like super like my, my, one of my best buds, uh, Sean. He's super into sports. Um, and I did sports when I grew up, but um, man, I, I'll be honest, dude. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll go to him. I just went to a Dodgers game. I uh, went to a Padres game, Petco Park. Uh, but like, I just work all the freaking time. So I, I own three companies. And it's just like nonstop. So, which I'm not complaining about. But, right, 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 right. Uh, I, I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I, I, I used to though, man. I used to go to. I went to Carolina for a year. I liked college football more than, uh, than uh, you know NFL. Right. But um, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. But you know, I'm always traveling too, man. I'm in a new city every weekend. I'm like, I'm gone again on Sunday for another two weeks. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying to. I saw my first. I saw my first Rockies game. It was in Denver. That was dope. So. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring back more in my life because I kind of like stepped away from it because I got yeah. so busy. So. Well, I hear you, man. We're just, that guy down there, Nick. He 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 keeps it busy for both of us. I got like three or four jobs as well, and and this is a hobby, even though it's kind of a job. But I get that busy thing. But I was able last night to actually sit down for three hours Monday night football. My Raiders. I'm a Raider fan. Las Vegas now. Nice. And did you happen to watch or hear about the game? Either one of you. Okay. I, I heard a little bit about the okay. Raiders game. Let I was me watching your post. Let me recap, and, and I'll do this <laughs> in as quick form or fashion as I can. I'm going to start it with 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. All right. Well, let, let's start it. The Raiders were down 14 nothing at a second quarter. So I'm like, okay, here's the typical Raiders. It's, they're they're going to they're going to they're going to choke this thing away. First game of the season, and I'm already pissed and sad. Anyway, fourth <laughs> quarter. Baltimore scores a field goal. We have like 35 seconds left. They get down the field. Two seconds left. Raiders kick a 55-yard field goal to tie it up. We go to overtime. Wow. All right. Raiders, yeah, yeah, yeah. Raiders win the toss. If they score a touchdown, game over. They run yeah. the field, throw a 33-yard pass. Touchdown. Holy crap. Raiders win. Everyone's going crazy. The bench is clear. Everyone's on the field. They're congratulating each other. But... The refs back. reviewed it, and his knee was down. The ball was about two inches short of the goal line, so they had to bring everyone back, get uh, on the uh, sidelines. So Baltimore thinks they've lost. Raiders have think, thought they won. And they got all these emotions going on, so they set them back up. So first and goal on the one. Scored a touchdown, game over. Run it in. No, they stop him. Second down. Penalty. Oh, bring it back five yards. Second and five. Throw it. Incomplete. Third down. Throws it. The guy drops it. It flies up. Friggin' Baltimore intercepts it. No point scored. Baltimore gets the ball back. Right? Takes it back. Okay, so here's the Raiders. So the Raiders won it, and then they lost it. Then the Raiders, they their defense, which has been god-awful for years, they stop them. They fumble it. We get the ball back. Holy crap, we're in field goal range. All right, forget everything. We got a few little bit of time left. We're going to kick the field goal. Oh, 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 yeah. but... But where's the kicker? They can't find him. Delay a game. So they lost five yards. So they bring the offense back in. Right. Oh. And yeah, they, <laughs> this is be, it was like nuts. Shit. It was just batty. And then they bring the offense back in and they blitz the house. Derek Carr throws off his back foot. Zay Jones gets open. Touchdown. Wide open. Game freaking over. The Raiders win it for the second time it's in done. overtime. <laughs> And the Raiders get the win over Baltimore. Whoo, man. I, I must have been and I, I'm a pretty Raiders. passionate sports guy. I mean, okay. I'm a passionate Raider fan, you know, all of the games. It's like, whatever. But when the Raiders play, oh man, watch out. You know, I've had neighbors call in the police because they thought someone was dying. My, <laughs> my lady now actually tweets out and Facebook posts to the neighbors. Don't worry. It's Sunday. The Raiders are on. If you hear any commotion going on, it's just the Raiders are on and, and the neighbors are now used to it. But it was up and down emotion last night, but we're riding high today. Whew. There's so my story. I said I'd make it quick. I'm sorry. Post. What? Be less vague on your Facebook post so I know what the hell is going on. Well, I'm it, like, shit, is he mad because I asked him to fucking make another video for us? <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? 
<laughs> if it's Sunday and the Raiders are playing, if it's any time when the Raiders are playing <laughs> and you see vague posts like that where I get all emotional, it's probably because it's the Raiders are on. I had to delete two of them because I even what I said was like, wrong. Man, my co-host is really sad. Maybe I need to get him some help. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the, Ra the Raiders are playing, man. The Raiders are playing. So tell us about your bourbon, Tyler. Well, I, I, can I ask you something? Yeah. So how'd you guys start this podcast? Um, that's a good question. You know, that's, that's for the rest of this time. Tyler's going to interview us. That'll be fun. Well, Please. I mean, I'm just like curious. Like, how'd you guys like, hey, let's start this podcast. About for about a year ago. Uh, what were Almost a year and a half ago now. Yeah, actually. yeah, give or take. Yeah. Uh, Nick, well, first of a background. You already heard a little bit about Nick. He has a background in uh, concert management and talent management and bringing in guests. So he's got experience and lots of connections with uh, many, many major players in the music industry, whether it be country, rock, you know, whatever. So he's got that going for him. Um, I met Nick, gosh, 15 years ago, give or take, because I work in radio. Now. Oh, you hear that? Now I got something going on back there. Um, I've worked in radio for many, many, many years. Uh, terrestrial radio. I've worked for uh, alternative rock stations, classic rock stations, you name it. I mean, that's that's the voice. Um, and yeah, through totally. that job uh, here in Southern Oregon, I met Nick. You know, he was promoting his concert, so you got to advertise those shows on the radio. And we met. So fast forward, uh, I ended up leaving terrestrial radio started my own radio station pirate radio check it out pirate radio.com p-y-r-a-t-e radio.com wink wink nudge nudge there's a free plug and uh nick pandemic just hit and he's going through some major issues with his baby who was in the NICU some scary times I'm going through some serious issues with uh my family and my lady some cancer related stuff proud to report that everything is good now but at the time um we didn't know it was pretty scary uh, so we're like, we, we, we let's do a, and he was always been talking about doing a podcast, but it was the right time. So two dads coming together in times of turmoil and trouble, we needed an outlet to, you know, blow off some steam. Sure. Try to have a distraction. Um, we both knew plenty of people, so we knew we could get at least to start out with some celebrity type people on there and our friends. Uh, and we were dad. So I come up with the name dad cast and that was our theme. And year and a half later, now we're about to, in fact, today when we record this, it is September 14th, 2021. When this episode drops, it's followers. Yeah, by the time you see this episode, wherever you may be in YouTube land or in Spotify land, wherever it may be, uh, over a hundred thousand Facebook fans and all the other platforms oh, are, are, are blowing up as well. Yeah. We're almost 50,000 on Instagram. We're going to hit 10,000. looks like in about the next 30 minutes on TikTok. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you it's, 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 it's in growing and doing well and we're getting, you know, guests like such as yourself, man, you're a player in the industry and we appreciate it. Although weird that you're not a dad. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but it, so I mean, the other yeah. thing too, though, is Marisa keeps saying we need bonus content. Here well, we go. There, got, there's your boner content, content right there. Did I say bonus? Exactly. I meant bonus. Well, that's cool, man. Well, that's awesome. Good for you guys. My 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 friends, you know, like the Shine Down crew. I'm I'm close with his name's Hoogie. He's from Canada, mm -hmm. but he's like he's their he's their base tech and whatever. Mm -hmm. And he started a podcast and uh, with another DJ, lost his job and. Um, I was helping out a whole bunch of that, but me and him are going to start one coming up and it's just going to be about, you know, rock and roll and whatever, you know? So do you have a title cool yet? Uh, uh, we're thinking like something on the rocks and rock and like someone bourbon and rock and roll together. Um, nice. one of our guys at Sirius XM gave us a really good name. I got it written down and we're like, that's what we're going to do. But you know, shine just hit the road again. So he's like, dude, I got to go make my money. I haven't worked in over a year. So we're going to do it soon, but it's exciting. I just bought that same mic you guys have, you know, <laughs> it just came in the other day. SM7B, baby. They're, they're yeah. good. Have you, they're have you good. picked up a uh, roadcaster? Uh, like a, like what? Like a, it's a little a board. Case. Uh, it's, it's the board. Oh, no. it, it's literally no, no, no. like the industry, what everyone uses and Standard. It, it's, and it's amazing. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at roadcaster pro check it out. It's like 600 bucks. Um, it's got cool. four mic channels, four can channels, and all your processing is built in. It's got like 12 presets where I can do, you know, <laughs> I don't know if that's coming through on your side, but some applause and laughter. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I then you okay. can program, awesome. you can program all the hot buttons, et cetera. It's really cool. 
Uh, that's what it, most people use these days. And if you're a techie, it, that's what you want to get. If you already paid, an, yeah. if you paid 300 bucks for a couple one of these and throwing it down for some roadcasters, I'd highly recommend it. And, well, and you're, and you're pretty set on that. That's, that's, that's good. That's I have, good equipment. we have four of them. Yeah, it's it's really good. <laughs> we, I got one at my house. Nick's got one at his house. I got one at my studio, and okay, we have three of them. But nice, yeah. man. Good stuff. Well, thank you, thank you for telling me. I was just curious. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank we you. do. Hey, hey, you know, and and, and we are all about the name dropping. Uh, <laughs> if you want to throw down a, a, an invite to your buddies and shine down, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Are any of them yeah. fathers? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the singer, the drummer is. is. The, the, the drummer and the singer, the bass yeah. player, no, and the guitar player, Zach. He's, he's got two kids. Yeah, we um, just, uh, so my buddy Jared Weeks from Saving April is going to be on pretty soon, and so that's, that's going to be kind of cool. Yeah, and, and I could get Scott. I'm good. I'm buddies with Scott, the guitar player from Saving Abel. I didn't. Yeah, he's, uh, I think we actually got Scott, too. All right, cool, because they um, were out here you, yeah. when we did a bunch of shows, and they came in and, I was, and yeah, performed I was live. Talking, I, th I think it was Scott that I was talking to. So Scott and Jared are both going to cool. be on. But yeah, we'd love to have the Shinedown guys on. And yeah. when your thing is rocking and rolling, uh, not to like float our own boat, but we have some, literally, this is a fact, one of the, if not the fastest growing podcast on social media, this very I, moment. Oh, I, saw, I saw that banner. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. So yeah, was uh, cool. It's, it's, it's for real. It, I don't think that would hurt. Your podcast we've, having we've also us been on. Told we're in the top ten in the nation on parenting podcast, which is that blows crazy. my mind. Because while yeah. we're good parents, I wouldn't say we're the greatest parents in the world. But you know, <laughs> I, I would still definitely right. give some strange advice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think but, I yeah. think uh, that could be possible, man. I mean, um, there's a there's a podcast here called Good People Association. It's about positivity and stuff, mm -hmm. but they, it's really funny and whatever. And uh, Eric Bass, the bass player, is invested in it. So I, I sponsor them with my bourbon sometimes. And then, you know, he calls in and does stuff. It's just, a, it's, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's a, it's a cool one. They have okay. a studio in Burbank. So right and he's on. in their, they're into podcasts for sure. So nice. yeah, man, I think, I think, I think the guitar player just started one too. So they're all just staying busy as shit, man. So yeah, my buddy Kenny Carkey from AWOL Nation just started a podcast with a bunch of his friends. Doing cool. and they, they basically just interview the who's who of whoever's coming through LA at the time, and it's that's, uh, cool, that's that's pretty cool, yeah. Dude, and then our people, managers are starting love Ben Carey from Lifehouse is starting one, and nice. Well, people just love this stuff, they just want to listen to people talk. Yeah, <laughs> it's because this belt is heavy, Nick. I didn't really you know holding it out for about 20 minutes and yeah, try to lift a 30 pound kid for all day. I have three times. <laughs> Oh, Nick's done it like six times, though. Yeah. Dude, my arms are killing me. I'm so happy that he's with Mama right now. <laughs> so, okay, back to the bourbon. I'm curious. Yeah. How how did that did just wake up one morning and you're like, I'm going to start a bourbon company? Um, You know, it's, it's a little bit of a story, but uh, how it started was I was in uh, – I was, I was living in Charleston, but I was about to move to Nashville. I just graduated college, 2014, and then uh, – I, this is how I got connected to this guy. He he manages Kenny Chesney. I'm not really a big country fan. Well, like bro country, like Americana, I love that stuff. But um, like like Ryan Adams, you know, I, I dig that mm -hmm. stuff a bit more than like the typical, or like Chris Stapleton or Jason Isbell or Sturgill Simpson. But um, but anyway, what I'm getting at is I met this guy, and his name was Clint. He manages Kenny Chesney and all that. I was serving at a restaurant in Charleston. I heard him talking about music. I basically followed, I got off work and I followed him and all those people he was hanging out with to this big convention center. I was like, yep, these are music people. And we just kind of connected in there. And so I was kind of getting groomed and I'll make this short for like a big management deal. Right. But if you remember back in 2014, 2015, like, you know, Florida George line was huge. Like bro country was everything. Right. And I was like, Ugh. and so the deal was basically, and it's a great documentary. You guys would love it. It's called Sonic highways, Foo fighters. Have you seen that? Yeah. On HBO. God, I tuned so, in every friggin' Sunday when that, I, I just think, like, it was on. so unique and so good. A new yeah. song every Sunday on the, different, different city. Yeah. The, yes. I've, I've seen it and I <laughs> loved it. It's great. Well, the Nashville one, I always compare this and they talk about the music road deal where they get like you, the best looking dude or chick. And you get a publishing deal. You don't even write the record. Maybe you get like a lyric in there. Then you get, then you get a record deal because you go to radio. And, you, and I've gone to radio independently a couple times. Uh, 
but I don't have a quarter million dollars. I'll never break a single. You know what I mean? So that's where you get a re- record deal. It's good. They can pay for the radio. And the next, thing you know, you're, you're a product in the country world. Cause you got a number one, you know? And so that was the deal, but I was gonna be singing about red dirt and beer and stuff. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that. And so I actually turned it down. But what I'm getting at is because of this deal, I had all these big meetings, right? With everybody, all these booking agents, talent buyers, and people even outside the industry were just kind of like, you got a lot of buzz going on, not about my music, but about this deal, right? And so uh, this guy came along, he's actually my friend's dad. He's like, yo, dude, you should, he's like, supposedly he was an investor and he, he ended up not being one which now it's led to even cool thing. Now it's a father son thing, which I'll get to that. But he's like, if you figure it out, I'll, I'll, you should, you should put a spirit to your name. did say bourbon, but I thought my last name being Boone. I'm like, Oh, well, Boone's bourbon sounds pretty cool. Like BB. And so I figured it out. I was broke as shit where I had like six part-time jobs. One of them was at a liquor store, like a nice one. And so I'll just kind of educate myself working there. And so I didn't have, I didn't have the money. He didn't have the money, but I paid for the label. I got my federal uh, license and I basically just went online every day and researched it for every day. I had my day off. I would just like, I got to figure this out. Cause I kind of thought if I put a spirit to my name on it, it would help my career. Right. And so uh, eventually I didn't have the money. I moved back to Charleston and this is the end of it. And uh, I'm just recovering from eye surgery. I was going to go back to Nashville. It was like a special thing I had to do for my eye. And I was just kind of Googling distilleries in Charleston and this one called Stripe Pig Distillery. I hit them up and they're like, Hey man, we're kind of like tanking. Uh, Cause they just weren't good at marketing, but they were good at making products. They're like, Oh, we'll give you our state license. And that was my last thing I needed because you need, you need a state license in every state to sell. Right. Which is a lot of money and it's, it's hard to apply for it. And they go, Hey, like we'll give you your state. You can launch South Carolina first and take it from there. And so they gave us a state license. And then uh, my dad was retired and I was like, Hey man, like you need to get off the couch. You're looking old. He was just watching golf all day. And so I was like, do this shit with me, man. We're selling, we're, we're going to try and sell bourbon. It sounds like a lot of fun. And so he matched my money and then we launched it locally. And then from touring in just three years, we're in 37 States. So now we, now it's like a full-time business. So I didn't want to start a bourbon. It just kind of happened. Now, now I'm so passionate about it. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning, man. We had no freaking clue what we were doing. We'd walk into bars, but do you want to pick up her shit? And they're like, get the hell out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was tough, dude. But now, but now we know like the talk and the lingo. We have brokers now that help us uh, get into bigger buyers. And we just, we just got a big deal in Vegas, like in the local casinos, not like mm-hmm. the win and stuff like the, uh, like the Orleans or whatever. So we're, right. we're learning, man. It's cool. It's cool. So um, but that's how we started it. It's 117 proof. I wanted a high proof. Uh, the, the number's cool. Cause it's, it's, it's odd. It's not like a 120 or something, you know? And so I thought 117 was cool. It's cash strength. We don't add water to it. It's how it comes out of the barrel. Uh, when you add water to a product, just to proof it down, obviously, but also to make it more economical, you can sell more of it. And so when you say cash drink, bourbon fans get excited. Cause like, Oh, you didn't add water to it. It's what it is. It came out of the cask. Uh, it's 75 corn, 21 rye, four barley. That's the mash bill. So. No, no added sugar. No, that if it's a bourbon, if you didn't know this, if it's a bourbon, you can't add anything to it. If if you add like flavoring to it, it becomes a whiskey. So, um, yeah, man. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the story. Absolutely. And, and then do you know off the top of your head where, uh, you know, a dad in his forties wearing a championship belt and a Dodger fan can pick some up in Oregon? No. So Oregon's a, uh, no, no, Oregon's not a control state, but we don't have, we don't have a distributor there yet. So, so but but definitely in Vegas. Definitely in Vegas. Uh, we're in like a uh, total wine uh, liquor depot. There's like 30 of them or something. There's like another one or, or, or Lee's liquor, Lee's liquor discount. It's a huge chain. Um, yeah, man, but it's only been three years. So like in COVID mm-hmm. slowed us way down. Yeah. Uh, it was really scary times. And so now we're starting to kind of get momentum again and we keep winning awards. Like we won gold Las Vegas. We won double gold, New York. We won, um, we just won platinum Los Angeles. And then, uh, uh, we got named top six in the world in Forbes. And so it's kind of, it's kind of dope because I'm not going to hold a bunch of bottles of there of other bigger brands like Elijah Craig or, uh, you know, all these famous brands. And we're like, we tied with all of them. And uh, it, it like kind of tipped us a little bit. And that's when people started buying us, even though we're the same product, but no buyers would like dismiss us all the time, like big national chains. And when we got that shit, uh, we started landing in cool stuff, man. So it's cool. Nice. So. Very cool. I'll be yeah, in Vegas in two weeks. A distillery up in Eugene here. So he makes vodka and different um, liqueurs. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know, but there's, you know, I don't know if you guys don't know this, this might kind of blow your mind a little bit. 
When you get bigger, everybody sources it from Indiana and it's called mm-hmm. MGP. So like, for example, Tito's, I like the spin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tito's is not even from Texas anymore. It's from, it's from Indiana, but they okay. says Austin's vodka. Yeah. Cause when yeah. you get, when you get bigger, how could, and just think about it this way, how could every bottle be in every liquor store and then every bar you walk into like a bullet or something, right? Yeah. It's cause they, or whistle pig. Like mm-hmm. obviously there's the aged ones, but like the main ones, like those are in every spot. Cause they're, they're just mass producing it and selling it yeah. to uh, brands. So it's a lot, it's a lot of white labeling in this business. So a lot of people lie about it. And mm-hmm. so there's one called redemption. Redemption got sued for like a couple million bucks. I believe I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they got sued because they, on the back of the label, they were, they weren't being super transparent and uh-huh. it made, it looked like they were making it when they weren't. And you, you can't do that. You have to tell yeah. people what you're doing. So uh, anyway, get, so, so is it, so it's Boone's bourbon. It's on the bottle. Yeah. We got to get yep. Boone's bourbon up to Pappy level. Oh, dude, one day it's, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to start a barrel program that takes a lot of money. Me and yep. my dad are like trying to figure it out. We're trying to raise money. We've never done it before. Cause it's just me and his money that we put into it. Um, if you do a barrel program, dude, that, that separates the boys from the men, like a 12 year or 13 year. Right. Like, shit like that, you know? So we're trying to get there, but you know, we will want to get for sure. Boone's bourbon presents dad cast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, there, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a sick Facebook group in Nashville called dad's drink and bourbon. It's like 40,000 of them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, those guys are awesome. Like I always, like they, they'll, they'll post about the boons. Like we're getting drunk, a whole bunch of dads. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> <Nice>. dude. <laughs> if you guys want a bottle, man, I can send you a bottle. So for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll think awesome. about it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice man. So uh, all that made yeah. sense. I know I, I know I vomited a whole bunch of information, but hopefully. You guys no, that's that good. Story. That's the beauty of this, uh, of this platform. Uh, cause mm-hmm. at some point you can hit pause and go right back in case you missed something. For sure. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, it's a good thing that Nick stopped drinking too. Cause now I can drink all the bourbon. Actually, I'm going to try that. I, I like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm glad you stopped drinking and it wasn't for like health or mental reasons. No, no I just, uh, I just don't choose to get drunk anymore I, I, I like i don't have a problem having a few sips and just having a good time but yeah i mean hey man i own a i own a bourbon label and everybody wants to hang out all the time and i'm like i don't want to get drunk anymore. right it's uh, you know what tyler you're ready yeah. to be a dad that right exactly. that statement right there that that proves it yeah if I'd known <laughs> like, you longer and we were like best friends, I would say our little boy's growing up, but we don't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but so, I feel it, man. I don't want to get, I don't want to wake up hungover anymore. I fucking hate that shit. This yeah. And, and when you get older, Ooh, I, I it's smell. Just, it's just not just a one day hangover. It's like a three or four day. Yeah. Hangover. And, and I, hangover I drive by liquor stores these days and get hungover. It's so strange. Yeah. And it's like instant. <laughs> And it's just, wow, Sometimes that was a, a rock star. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I, I smell Red Bulls. I am conditioned now. I had so many vodka Red Bulls back in the late twenties, early thirties that I smell a Red Bull now and it's instant vodka and it's oh, no, There's not a big fan Golf courses. I can't go to because of Red Bull. Well, you got <laughs> kicked out of them. That's not in the no, alcohol. So yeah, it turns out driving is. the cart into the, into the pond is frowned upon. Not a, right. It's, not a, it's good, not a good thing. I yeah. used to work at a golf course. It was one of my first jobs, man. We used to jump the carts into the lakes after hours. I was 15 years oh old. My God. Uh, I wonder so, if I ever found I, those I carts. Furniture, we had to go every every couple of months. We have to go play golf tournaments with all the furniture dealers. We went to one up in Roseburg at this. The golf course was right next to a trailer park. Every yeah. hole had a keg and a bartender with like a full bar. So by the time we were on hole eight, I was hammered. <laughs> hammered. <laughs> on top of that, the owner of my store brought two cases of rock stars and six big bottles of Jaeger. Oh, by oh my holes God. 12, all the rock star and the Jaeger was gone. And there was only four of us in that cart. Oh, and you still <laughs> and had six probably, holes to play. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was bad. You, and then you, we went to seven feathers afterwards. <laughs> you, probably didn't eat. you probably didn't eat during the whole day, though. No, no. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I yeah. drank. I just kept drinking. It was day drinking and then drinking all night. And I can't do that anymore, uh, man. I just can't I do have it. Not had a, I have not had a Jaeger bomb since. I <laughs> probably never will. <laughs> so you've well, dude, had. Like, uh, yeah. 
Go ahead. I seen that you've, uh, I, I did a little, a little deep dive, went down the rabbit hole on Tyler Boom before we got on here, not knowing if you were going to be even be on. And it's funny. I didn't notice the fact that you weren't a dad, but I keep bringing that up. I apologize. Uh, not your <laughs> fault at all. It's all good. Uh, but I see that you've opened up for the likes of actually you've, uh, like Cheryl Crow has closed for you. I have seen, I've seen <laughs> that you have all, uh, it, it was rascal flats that I saw that you played with. No, uh, Is- no, no, not rascal flats, but I've done like, uh, Avid brothers, old Carl Men show. Uh, Hootie and the Blowfish, because they're from Charleston. Hootie, uh, there it is. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, Darius Rocker. I used to manage a band from the 80s that you guys might remember. Uh, do you remember the band Driving and Crying? Driving and Crying, yes. Remember I that? don't. Fly Me Courageous, all that. Well, Darius Rucker cut straight to hell like two years ago. That was a big deal for him. So um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Our One of our uh, good friends and uh, part of our management team, Brian Hopkins, who's an Elvis Monroe, um, he's hung out and he's friends with Darius as well. Remember the stories he told us, Nick? Yeah. Nice guy. Hanging out with nice who? Guy. Yeah, so crazy. They like to party. They like to party. <laughs> I would love to party with Hootie. I think I would actually I would actually get drunk and take a hangover for that one. I would take one for the team. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, 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 used, I, was, I was good friends with Mark Bryan, the guitar player, and he's like super tall. Yeah. And we would... We would be, uh, I don't smoke pot. I, your body just changes, man. I don't smoke pot anymore. But like when I was in college, I did. And I remember we're at his like super dope ass house. You know, he had like three of them as one downtown and he like made a bowl out of like tin foil. And I was like, dude, you're fucking rich. Like, <laughs> <laughs> look at we're smoking a crack pipe. I was like, no, this is funny, man. But he was, his birthday was on Cinco de Mayo. So we used to call it uh, Marco de Cinco. It was always fun. Marco so those, de those guys, Cinco. They were cool, man. If you got to open up, so like Hootie, people that know this, because now they did that reunion tour, um, mm-hmm. they still played a couple shows a year. It was always golf tournaments, right? Mm-hmm. And it was Hootie, not Darius, right? And so uh, they, always, they would always ask a couple of Charleston bands to open up for him. So I was in college. And Mark's like, come open up. And it was like, you know, everyone in Charleston thinks of royalty building up for Hootie. So that was like, I was super young, but they were always really nice to me. So I'll, I'll always remember awesome. that shit. So they were cool. Very cool. You may have so. just answered that my next question, but in case you didn't, uh, who is uh, your favorite band that has ever closed for you? I always put it that way. You, it, okay. It, you you got to figure that one out. I like that. That's funny. Uh, man. Um, you know, Dr. John was pretty cool. I like my favorite thing is blues music. Um, I was supposed to open up for Buddy Guy once, and then they took it away from me Ooh, the next day. Buddy Guy, I, I, lear- I saw him I a few years li- ago. He's still he's like eighty one or yeah. something, man. Uh-huh. I lied to the to the talent bar. I was like, dude, you gotta you gotta let me open up because I already changed my flight, and he, he wouldn't do it. But um, I'm, I, you know what? I'm just look, I'm looking at my. You ever heard of the Revivalists? They're pretty dope. Um, yeah. Uh, but I would say probably the you know here's a funny one. I opened up for Christopher Cross years ago. <laughs> Um, and my parents like, I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, but I just got out. I still put up this guy, Christopher Cross. I'm like, we used to have his eight track. Did he play sailing? So he, oh, he totally did. He's, <laughs> he could still, he could, he could still rip the guitar, man. Yeah. He, he sat down when he played, but it was at a place called Boone Hall Plantation. It's in Charleston too. So it was kind of funny that, you know, I got to play it and, um, everyone was super nice. It was like a wine festival. What I'm getting at is all these older people getting hammered on wine. And so they gave us a trailer and then they had, and Christopher Goss had his two trailers and I had my own. And my parents are just having the time of their life. They bring all their friends to like the backstage. My parents would do that shit all the time too. They'd be like, they'd walk up security, you know, like at a concert and they'd be like, uh, I, we need to get back there. And like, you, you can't come back. Or, oh, we're, we're his parents. And I'm like, I would, I would always walk up. Like you guys got to stop doing that shit. <laughs> they would, they would just, they would get, you know, they would get pissed. But I was like, they got back, they brought all their friends back. And this is what I'm getting at. They, my parents trashed our trailer. There was what, like all their friends champagne red wine stains everywhere and i didn't do it right and then the guy that the, the talent bar he came on the bus it's 5 p.m it was an early show 5 p.m everyone's gone we're all hammer drunk we all walk outside and it's so trash the guy wrote me a letter the next day and he said you, you're not you're never allowed to come back here again and i show my parents I'm like you got me fucking kicked out of this show <laughs> <laughs> and mom was like, I want to write him a letter. And I was like, mom, it's not going to do anything. But it was, pr- I thought that was pretty rock and roll. My parents got me kicked out. So. Well, uh, that's that probably the most rock and roll story I've ever heard. Actually. Those Chris Cross <laughs> fans. <are laughs> <laughs> I 
Damn. Hey, dude, his, his keyboard player, her name, she lives out here. His name is Kiki Esben. Her dad, she used to play with Tracy Chapman, all these cool people, Eric Clapton. Um, her dad was the Tin Man. And we've, we 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 stay in touch right now and that from Wizard of Oz. That was pretty cool. Oh, so wow. anyway, you, you know you never know who you meet, you know. Right. I'm throwing this out there. If we ever get to party with Hootie and the Blowfish, we're bringing Tyler's parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you want to play a sh- not if you want to play a show again, Nick. <laughs> I That's- dude. I'd let Tyler's parents get me kicked out of any venue just to see that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even care. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Miss Boone, you heard it. Gauntlet's been thrown. That's right. They like they like to party. They throw down, dude. They're a lot of fun. Um, but do, awesome. do you just ask, man, because we're talking about music, obviously. Do you have any concerts that you got lined up, or is it all pretty much nothing? We, until we did, but everything's pretty much done until um, next year. So we, we've been working with Marty Ray Project. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah. Big YouTube yep. sensation. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a stand-up comedian coming through, Steve Turbino. It just basically everything with – we have in our in our counties – we have the highest COVID spike in the entire country. Yeah, so, so our our hospitals are completely overwhelmed. It's it's a nightmare here. Holy crap! Um, yeah, so like my, my mother in law actually just tested positive for COVID, and she's been fully vaccinated. She's super yeah. sick. Uh, one of my really good friends that owns a restaurant in downtown Grants Pass has been on a ventilator for thirty six days. We don't know if he's going to make it. So, dude, I, it's, I got it. It's crazy. I got it. I got it two months ago. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was sick for two weeks. I had to get a steroid shot just to get out of bed. And my, this other drummer friend of mine, he's a bartender. So we, we all did an Indiegogo for him because he, he doesn't have health insurance, you know, mm-hmm. but he was double vaxxed and he has 30 grand worth of medical bills. He had to go to the hospital for like four weeks. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, I got it. it. Was uh, I was stuck in bed for two days. Like I get up, I work out every day, like religiously and take a shitload of vitamins. So anybody that goes on social media saying, just take your vitamins. Like it's, it, it can work for some people, but you know, I'm, I'm somewhat healthy and it, it kicked my ass. It's, it it's bad. not a joke. And I'm going to knock on wood. I think I'm immune. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, vaxxed, I mean, dude, I, I'm double vaxxed and yeah, I, I've dude. been around. I was in a car yeah. with that guy yeah. for eight hours <laughs> a day before he got diagnosed with it. We didn't know he had it, but I, I mean, we were sitting literally as close as you and I are on that screen right now for making stupid videos. <laughs> yeah, like literally spitting on each other. And <laughs> and I didn't get it. And a few weeks ago, I was in the same room with someone else, two people who got it. So yeah. I and I get knock on wood because, you know, watch tonight. I'm going to get sick. But uh, so far, <laughs> I'm immune. How about that? Hey, man, you, you just don't you just don't know. You know, like I, I didn't get it the first round, you know, but I got this random Delta one you know, yep. just because, but, uh, but I'd be around my liquor reps hanging out with them and we're not supposed to be in the car with each other, but, uh, we just did it anyway. And I remember this one of my reps, he's like, Hey dude, I got COVID and I didn't, nothing happened to me. You know, it's just a funky virus. dude. I have it's, phantom it's smells weird. now. I smell like right now it's actually happening. That's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, I smell like gas leaks all the time. It's like a side effect after you smell like metal or gas and it's, I'm not, yeah, I've heard that no gas. Yeah. My mom has it too. Cause she just got it. So I, I just smell all these random smells and it's, it's funky. It's weird. So yeah, we did. We've done a series of interviews with, we did some, we talked to a doctor, we talked to a, a city count, a city council member, a business owner and a county commissioner just to get different ideas and viewpoints of what this is and how it's affecting our community. And it's just, it's crazy. The the doctor um, is, is basically saying it's, this is something we've never seen in our lifetime. Like this is a new virus, new there's no rhyme or reason to how people are getting it, how it's affecting people. It's just, it's so crazy. Yeah. And all the people that are like, Oh, it's, it's no big deal. It's, it's just the flu. It's, it's not just the flu. <laughs> it's, it's a funky, weird thing that keeps trans. I mean, dude, 10 years, there'll be, there's gonna be some crazy documentary. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to blow our minds, you know? Exactly. Uh, anyway, well, I'll, I hope you guys all stay safe, man. I didn't know you guys were the highest spikes in the country. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's yeah, and to change the subject, Nick, because anyway. that's what we always seem to talk about on on the Zadcast recently, uh, yeah. which is good. Don't get me wrong; I'm not trying to be rude, but yeah. we are actually, believe it or not, running out of time. So I wanted to ask a couple more questions to our man Tyler Boone here, who is not a dad. Um, <laughs> that's just a dig at our PR people. Are we going to call this dig. not a dadcast? Dadcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, th- I, I might title it that. Tyler, you should. You Tyler, should. Tyler, not a dad boon featured on dad or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have any shows scheduled coming up? And now that things are kind of opened up a little bit down there, you got anything going in plans? And if so, when and where can anyone listening to this or checking it out online check out who and what is Tyler Boone? Yeah, man. Thanks for asking. Uh, I just I just did Summerfest last week. Uh, it's to Milwaukee. Um, <clears throat> that was dope. Uh, we helped, we supported JD McPherson. Uh, we're like the blues stage because we do like uh, like Black Keys, Gary Clark Jr. type music. But um, it was JD McPherson and Drive By Truckers, which was cool. Um, Twenty One Pilots was the main headliner, but we did that. But coming up uh, next week, I'm at I'm just at Louder Than Life promoting the boons but then i got i go to nashville which i used to live uh for americana fest it's kind of like the south by over there and then uh we're playing hotel cafe which is like a very hollywood venue uh in november but other than that man like i was supposed to be on a whole bunch of big festivals and they all you know all that thing man like they all just got canceled or pushed back but we just did a whole bunch of shows recently I, i've been like on the road a lot man i've been playing a lot of shows it's when when the dip kind of happened like a couple months ago Everyone's like, let's do shows as fast as we can, and then all of a sudden it happened again. So it's right. been kind of sparingly, but um, yeah. but yeah, I'll be doing a I'll be doing Americana Fest next week in Nashville, and then doing a big show here in Hollywood, uh, and then uh, yeah, man, you can just check out the music, TylerBeanMusic.com, Spotify, all that good stuff. You know, we uh, as an independent artist, just to kind of toot my own horn, I got a plaque here. Uh, you know, I'm independent, man. I'm a, I have my own label. I have, I have like almost 12 million streams, so it's a uh, thing that's starting to pop off. And my opinion of it, it's because when COVID hit. At all if you didn't focus on the internet you should have you know we focus mm-hmm. super hard on the internet and it kind of tipped a little bit so it's kind of cool man so yeah same um, thing with us like we mentioned earlier yeah. in the show that's <laughs> so i gotta ask yeah. a controversial question then where you jump back into that covid thing what is your feeling on the the venue situation with mandating you know getting into venues with the vaccine or if you don't have the vaccine getting tested to make sure you're negative before you enter masked inside yeah. a building you know, only because, I mean, you've, you are more of a town bar than I ever been, but I've done, I have put on my own events, put a whole bunch of money down, but um, whatever, what I'm getting at is, since I'm kind of familiar with it, is uh, my opinion is obviously everyone's doing their best to be as safe as possible, but I think all across the board, everyone, and, I'm, and this is what I'm going to get at at the end of it, but the example is uh, everyone's saying on social media, you got to be tested or you got to, you know what I mean? Or you got to have a 72 hours, whatever. I think they're all saying it to save face because I've shown up to events and they don't even check it. You know right. what I mean? So yep. I think I think it's just a save face thing. Be like, hey, look what we're doing. And you show up and like, thank, thank God for buying a ticket. We Our SBA loan has run out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so that's, that's one thing I, I've, I've noticed on that from all the research I've done, vaccinated people carry the virus sometimes more so than unvaccinated. You sometimes don't know you have it venues that are actually checking non-vaccinated people and not the vaccinated are irresponsible. You're letting in a bunch of people could possibly be spreading it and have a super spreader to a bunch of unvaccinated people. Yeah. It just, it doesn't, the whole thing just doesn't make sense. It's just, it's crazy. It's weird. People are so ready to do shit. So they're going to go, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, don't get uh, me wrong. I would love, I fucking miss concerts, man. I miss being around a ton of people and hanging out backstage and, but I also value my family. I value JP and his family. And no, you know. no, you, you got to be smart. I'm just saying, I, yeah. it's, I think it's going to be longer than we have to, because people are just going to go do shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to they're gonna break the rules, you know, or the venues are not going to really enforce it, you know? So, right. Uh, like we went to Summerfest. They had a, they were great with it. If you didn't have it, they go, well, there's the testing spot. You can't go play your slot if you don't go. And we all mm-hmm. had our cards, you know what I mean? But yeah. I was like, wow, I thought they weren't going to enforce it. They go, no, no, if you don't have it, you literally can't play today. And we would have to refund. We would have to give back our check. Like, it was very strict. So, oh, wow. Um, and, and the bass player, he's like, I can't find it. And I was sitting there staring at him. I was like, you better you better have it. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going yeah, acoustic yeah. tonight. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, but yeah, man, I, I'm glad you guys are safe. And thanks for having me on here. And thanks for letting yeah. me talk about stuff man it means a lot absolutely and i hope you didn't take offense to the fact that i mentioned at least 17 times you weren't a dad i i just literally it's just the running joke knows, of the Tyler episode is not a dad yeah so we'll get that out of the way real quick <laughs> in, 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 any any did you got a girlfriend are you married I, 
Uh, I'm, I'm a very single man. I All right, very ladies, serious look at that man right there. Single, <laughs> single, ready to mingle. We got a very disease free. We, we need to find a good candidate to make that guy a dad right there so we can have him back on the show and discuss. Now you're a dad. <laughs> Tyler Boone, he is the man. He's a musician. He is not a dad. And he has been an absolutely 100% an amazing guest here on DadCast. Thank you so much, Tyler, for taking time out of your day. Uh, we very, very sure. much appreciate it, man. Nick, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, I feel like that last statement, we could actually become a really shitty MTV show for dating services. Bring on some <laughs> Don't we already have enough going on, Nick? Pump your yeah, brakes, did. man. Pump your brakes. To everyone find, else. Find a baby mama. MTV's find a baby mama. <laughs> it's uh, probably funny. already been done. <laughs> we, we can do baby mama island or something, you know. Oh, dude. <laughs> Throw Tyler Boone on an island with a bunch of single chicks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but 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 they want to get pregnant. That could be dangerous. Uh, that that's oh an entirely God. other I feel episode. Like we just like went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. We probably shouldn't. That's have. an entirely different episode. We will discuss at another time. <laughs> Tyler Boone, thank you. He is oh, Nick man. Martin. To everyone watching and listening, thank you so much. Make sure you like us up, comment, subscribe to the channel. We'd very much appreciate it. it helps us out a ton, yes. and we'll see all of you next week. Peace, see you guys.